Hey, Grand Adventurers, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Mark Guido. And this week, we're going to show you how to do some important maintenance to your RV's water heater. So stay tuned. Just like a residential water heater, your RV's water heater has what's known as an anode rod. It's a sacrificial piece of metal designed to keep your RV's water heater from corroding. And the way that it works, it's made of either magnesium or aluminum surrounding a steel wire that goes up through the middle of this section of in what I believe is in this case aluminum. And what that does is it attracts ions of iron and other minerals that may be in your water that would normally accumulate and corrode in your water heater. In the process of attracting those materials, this does gradually get eaten away. So once it's gone or it's down to next to nothing, it's virtually like having no protection in your water heater at all. So what we're going to do in this episode is replace our anode rod and also rinse out any corrosion that may be accumulated inside our water heater. We're going to pop off the cover here to start out and gain access to our water heater. Now ours is a suburban water heater, but if you have an Atwood or some other similar brand, it's going to function in much the same way. Just might look slightly different. Uh, right here we have a pressure relief valve, which we're going to open. So that way when we remove the anode rod, the pressure doesn't burst the water out right into our face like I did the very first time I ever tried to winterize an RV. It was pretty exciting. Anyway, you take a 1 and 1 16th inch socket and right there is our anode rod and we're going to use that to open that up. Put a little elbow grease into that. And we'll just pull this out the rest of the way and see what our anode rod looks like. It's been in here for about a year. I changed it last year just before we left on the road. And I try to do this every year at one year intervals. And oh yeah, holy cow. It's time. On your left is what this looks like new and on your right is the one that was in our water heater. And you can see that it has corroded over time by attracting those ions that would have corroded our water heater. Uh, this does tend to be a faster process if you have relatively hard water uh, with a lot of mineral content in it. But you can see it's, uh, I mean, there's definitely life left in our old one, but it's a good idea to put a new one in right now. So before we rinse this out, it's almost done draining. I got here a boroscope that works with my cell phone's camera. I'm going to send this down into the hole where the anode rod used to be and take a look inside and just see how much mineral buildup we have inside the hot water tank. Let's send this in there and take a look. Oh yeah. You got a lot of gunk in there. You can see all the mineral buildup sitting on the bottom. Mostly here near the outlet. Because that's where it all got sucked to when I drained it. But there's plenty in there. Let's see what, how much of this we can get out of there. So now we're going to take this little pressure wand and shove it in there and see just how much of this material we can flush out. And you can see we're getting a ton of mineral deposits that are coming out. I 
The water is starting to come out much clearer with a lot less residue contained within it. So I think we've gotten a pretty good job getting this rinsed. I'm just going to give it a little bit more. Oh, see, there's a little bit more. I'll keep going. Every time I think I've got it, I got more coming out. This also gives you a good opportunity to get the threads clean for when we insert the new anode rod. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about this now. I'm just going to clean this material off the water heater itself and then we're going to get that boroscope back in there and see how much cleaner it is. All right, let's have a look. You know, I'm going to give it a little more time. There's still quite a bit in there. Some parts look nice and clean, like over here. But yeah, no, there's a bunch of material still in there I think I'd like to get out. All right. I'm also going to try turning on our city water connection to try and use that water to try to rinse this out as well. Let's go in for another look. Still lots of material, but it's mostly at the opening, which means we're getting there. See how it's all accumulated near the opening? And if I go back further, it's getting nice and clean in there. That's where this boroscope comes in handy. I can actually get in there and take a look and see what's left to do. So let's keep plugging away. So that may well be as good as we're going to get this because I don't have a lot of material coming out anymore. And there is, of course, a lip right here at the entrance. Let's try and get in there and get a good look around. There's some material still laying down there, but it's definitely cleaner than it was when we started. You know, because this hole for the anode rod is actually not on the very bottom of the tank, some of this material is going to get caught behind the lip. But we've done a good job getting the burner cleaned and the rest of the inside of the tank cleaned out. So now I'm going to put some Teflon plumber's tape on the threads of the new anode rod to try to get a good seal. A little tricky out here where it's breezy. This stuff is so flimsy to work with. Yeah, it keeps twisting up on me, dang it. But there we go. That's pretty good. So now we'll just thread the new one into the hole. 
Start out by tightening it by hand. Trying to get those threads to start. There we go. Got it started. We'll once again take our 1 and 1 16th inch socket and tighten it up. I'm trying to do this and be able to show you at the same time. It's not so simple. Get that good and tight without over tightening. We just want to make sure we have a good seal. And we'll go turn on the water and see if that's seated properly. It looks like we got a good seal. Everything is holding. I've got no water coming out as the hot water tank is refilling. I will turn the hot water tank back on and clean up from this job. That's all there is to it. We picked up all of the supplies that we needed to do this job in this handy little kit on Amazon. It includes the new anode rod. It includes a two-piece pressure wand that you saw us use in this episode. It also includes a quick disconnect and the Teflon plumber's tape at a very reasonable cost. We'll put a link down below in the video description uh, to this on Amazon if you'd like to pick it up to do this job yourself and we'll also put it in the Grand Adventure Shop on Amazon. It costs you no more to shop Amazon through the Grand Adventure Shop. However, Grand Adventure does receive a small commission on each sale. We're into this job for only 15 bucks, but as you can see, it's not only really inexpensive to do, but it's really simple to do to protect the longevity of your RV's water heater. If you found this information useful, if you liked this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. That's extremely important to us. And also down below, that's where you'll find the comment section, where we always love to hear from you after each grand adventure. We air new outdoor RV adventure travel videos each and every Wednesday. So if you're not yet a grand adventurer yourself, now is the time for you to go smash that little subscribe button right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a grand adventure. Finally, we'd be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. So until next Wednesday, please remember life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.